So that's how we write it. This is said, take the integral of the first derivative of your position function. This is the first derivative of your position function. I substitute that back in. I'm going to take an integral of this. Can you all help me? What's the integral of negative 32t? What would you do? Okay, I'm going to do this a little bit longer, but yeah, you guys are right. I'm going to do negative 32t squared over 2, just so people can see where that's coming from. I'm going to take an integral and adding 1 to the exponent divided by the new exponent. Plus, don't forget about the 128. That doesn't go to 0. This is not a derivative. It's an integral. So 128t plus c. Good, plus c. Now, of course, you guys are right. This is going to be negative 16t squared. In fact, if you've ever seen position functions for uh, projectiles, they always have that negative 16t squared in front of it. Why? Why? Gravity. That's why. It's not magic. It's not magic. Someone actually did the work and said, oh, yeah, yeah. If we're accelerating downward negative 30, 32 feet per second squared, if I integrate that twice, I get a position function, that's going to be in my problem. Okay. Now, tell me, people on the left-hand side of the room, what would be the next step that I would do here? Solve for C. Good. Uh, now, how? Your initial, S, uh, your initial function. Since yeah, we have that, this is my position at zero. <coughs> my position at zero is 16. My position at zero says plug in zero to your T. This is my position at 0, and I knew that had to be equal to 16. It says if you plug in 0, look at this what it says. If you plug in 0, it's got to be equal to 16. Since I plugged in 0, it must be equal to 16. You, you okay with that? How much is C? 16. Clearly, everything else goes to 0. So that means our position function. sense. says, think about this, diagnose this. What's this from? That part. What's that from? Well, then what is it from though? Where does it stem from? Well, I know it's integral, but is it from the height? Is it from the velocity or is it from the gravity? Oh dear goodness. Where did the negative 16 come from? It's from integrating this twice, right? I sure hope so. This part is from gravity. We just talked about that. Come on, people. Some of you are zoning out right now. Stop zoning out. Get with me. That's from gravity. You integrate negative 32, you get negative 32t. Integrate it again, you get negative 32t squared over 2. That's negative 16t squared. That's gravity. What's this? What's that come from? That's the initial height. In fact, if you plugged in time equals 0, you get 16, right? So you start from 16 feet. What's this from? That has to do with your initial velocity. When you start out, what are you at? So basically, I'm shooting something off and then letting gravity take its effect on that. And that's what that says. Feel okay where this stuff is coming from, at least. Now, with any type of a projectile problem like this, couldn't you just write the answers from your initial values the same? I mean, there's a definite pattern between the value, your initial Oh, yeah, values. absolutely. All you need to know is your initial velocity. Uh, gravity you and your initial and height, and you can do basically the same thing with projectile functions. Now, of course, this doesn't take into account certain things. This doesn't take into account wind resistance, doesn't take into account like a propellant. So, you know how South Korea launched a rocket, or North Korea, sorry, uh, launched a rocket yesterday and it went up and came seven. down? Well, we couldn't model that exactly right because of wind resistance, because it probably didn't go straight up unless they're really just not very bright. Because uh, from what I know, you don't launch rockets straight up. That would be stupid. Um, but if they, even if they did, right, we wouldn't be able to model it great because if they have some sort of propellant that's launching it, you have to take that into account. Also how the propellant's burning off, things like of that nature. This just basically says, I'm launching it and letting go. Or maybe the rocket took off and then the moment it took off, it just blasted real quick and poof, But then it's not firing anymore. That would be a different story. This just has an initial velocity and then we let t gravity take its course. There's a difference there. Now, we're almost done. We have the first part. We've got this. 
We know that this is equal to negative 16t squared plus 128t plus c. In our case, c was 16. Okay, part one done. We can do part two and three at the same, at, well, not the same time, but any time that we want. How would you do part two? Let's talk about that. When would part two happen? When you set it to zero. Set what to zero? Well, the, uh, the, prime the, t. Not the position, right? No. That would be a height. The first derivative, though, gives us the velocity. That says when it's zero, it's going to be at its peak. So if we set this equal to zero, Thirty-two t equals one twenty-eight. What's t equal if you divide one twenty-eight by thirty-two? Four. four. Exactly four. Mm -hmm. I love it. For what? Seconds, because t is a time second. So, what's your maximum height? Is it four? No. No, that's four seconds. How would you figure out your maximum height? Here's what you know. Your maximum height occurs after four seconds. So after four seconds, you're at the maximum point uh, of, of your height, and then you start dropping. How would you figure out the maximum height? Plug it in where? Your position. The position function. Yeah, so that's what we had to figure out the position function first so that we could actually find the maximum height. We could have found out when it is the maximum height very easily. Uh, as soon as we had that, we could have done it. But to figure out the actual maximum height, you've got to have something to plug it into. So maximum height occurs at 4 seconds Can someone please plug that in for me into my position function and find out exactly how high we get? 784 784 feet? Someone else double check that for me? 784 feet please It's probably going to be a whole number. So what this says is that your catapult you built is going to launch something from a height of 16 feet. It's going to go to 784 feet. That's after four seconds and start dropping like a rock. When is it going to hit the ground? Acceleration is never zero. It's a constant. Hey, let me ask you this question. Uh, what is the height when you hit the ground? You understand the height when you... If you fell on your face, your face would be at zero when you hit the ground, right? Right now my face is at six. Six feet. And then it's going to go... And I'm going to get zero feet off the ground. Does that make sense? Now, which one of these represents your height? Is it the position, the first derivative, or the second derivative? Position. Your position. So what this says is, when does this equal what number? Zero. When does it equal zero? This is actually a, a math sequel, a an intermediate algebra question. We just did this today. I just taught this in another class today. <coughs> it says, take this. Set it equal to zero. Solve for t. That's going to give you a time. In fact, it's a quadratic, right? It's going to give you two times. Do you see the two times that I'm talking about? One will be positive, one will be negative. You're going to take those two times. Which one is going to make sense for this problem? The positive t or the negative t? Well, some of you guys are not with me today. What makes sense if you're going to hit the ground after some amount of time? A negative time? Can you launch a catapult and it hits backwards in time? That'd be pretty sweet. I, I'm sure North Korea would have loved that. I launched it and it hit them in, in, the, in the past. Ha 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 ha. They'd have won the Korean War. They would have won. Yeah, so that doesn't work. So what we're talking about is in your quadratic, when you do quadratic formula or whatever you want out of that thing, uh, you're going to set this equal to zero. It's not, it's not right. It's not right. It's not right. Two, Why'd you both give me that then? I forgot. I mean, I mean, uh, two people can't. It's negative. It's 270. You didn't do negative 16. Oh, you're 272. 272. I kept this from driving. 272. <laughs> How do you calculus people make simple mistakes like that? I'll never get it. I don't understand. 
We have good intentions, Leonard. Come on. So <laughs> you know what you match up with good intentions and bad follow through? A bunch of crap. <laughs> a bunch of crap. You have all the good intentions in the world. I intended to drive well when I was drunk. <laughs> Perfectly did. I ran over 37 people, but fully intended to do well. Yeah. Okay, good intentions suck. Uh, anyway, okay, so make a note on your paper. I don't do the math. I trust you guys. I should never trust you guys, apparently. 272 feet instead of 784. Make sure you have a negative mic. Goodness gracious, this is ridiculous. Um, anyway, I'm not going to do the rest of that for you. I'm going to trust you to make your own mistakes on that one. Uh, use a quadratic formula to figure out the time. One will be positive, one will be negative. The positive time works. The negative time says you launch a catapult and it, and it lands in the past. That doesn't make any sense at all. Your positive time would be when it hits the ground. Richie, I feel okay with our example. We got to move on. All right.